So my first paycheck with my new salary has hit my bank account and I managed to spend it all on eating out. Hello and welcome back to another Transfer Tuesday where I'm going to show y'all how much I made, where I spent it, and where the rest of that money is going. A very special welcome back to the 15.5% or so of you who are subscribed. And if you're new here, I'm Raymond, a software engineer on the path to financial independence and retiring early, and I've managed to save over $79,000 so far. If you'd like to follow me on my journey, feel free to hit that subscribe button. It really helps out the channel, so thank you so much in advance. Starting off with my income and my 401k, I added $1,510.59, not including my employer match, to my 401k. This is the 40% of my paycheck, or at least of my new salary, and it's about $100 more or so from my previous amount that I was putting in. Next, we have my HSA, which I'm putting in $131.25 into, which should be enough to max it out by the end of the year, along with my employer contributions. Finally, we have my new paycheck, which is very much similar after the adjustments to my 401k contributions to my old paycheck of $1,652.15. Just to illustrate the numbers out for you, I was making $87,570 as a software engineer in a medium cost of living area. And after my salary adjustment of 3.5% for the year, I am now making 90635 this is still a little bit less than what I would consider ideal, but I do have some interviews both internally and externally coming up, so I'm really excited about the opportunity to potentially increase that by a pretty decent amount. Next, we have my spending, which is where things get a little bit more wacky. Starting off with the more normal stuff though, my rent and utilities came out to be $65.61 for just the utility part because I already paid my rent in the first half of this month. In terms of transit, I spent quite a bit this half of the month at $51, and the month isn't even over yet. A lot of this can be attributed to the fact that I took our local public transit system multiple times over the weekend, which is something that I usually don't do for the sake of attending one of the live events here in town. For groceries, I spent $121.62. I still have one more week's worth of groceries to order for March, so this is also not complete for the month of March. And finally, the item that I broke the hardest this month, which was my eating out budget, I spent $126.62 on eating out in probably the span of a couple of days. To better explain what went on, there was a multi-day event here in town, and I spent most of the time in that event venue, and you could probably guess what happened as a result. I ate out most of my meals instead of cooking, and as a result, that budget item just completely went off the rails. Luckily for me, I could split some of those expenses with friends, but in the end, eating out is still more expensive than cooking yourself, and so this is where I kind of dropped the ball with the budget this month. Not too big of a deal though, this is like $50, $60 over, and that's not going to make or break my early retirement plans. Finally, for miscellaneous items, I spent $81.24, part of which were tickets to another live event that's happening in July. I hadn't been to a concert or any other sort of live event since 2019, and after attending this one and realizing how much fun I had, I think I decided in my head that this was the year that I wanted to make up for that. Of course, having the money to attend these live events is one thing, but having the vacation days to actually spend on going to these live events is also another thing to worry about. Finally, let's talk about some of the goals that I'm putting my money towards. I'm still putting money towards my master's program, even though I'm like 99% sure that I'm going to be taking a pause on that by the end of this semester. But in case I do decide to start this up again, I am still contributing here $161.75 into that fund, just in case I need to pay tuition and decide to enroll in a class. For my student loans and hospital bills for the month of April, I'm adding $19.158.07 respectively. For future travel expenses, I'm adding $250 into that fund. And finally, for my credit card annual fee fund, I am adding $119.58. Unfortunately, I have some bad news to share about that. American Express finally decided to take their annual fee, and that means that I will be withdrawing $695, which is still quite a bit of money, for, especially for an annual fee for a credit card, to pay for that. But after calculating all of my expenses, I still have $810.25 left to invest, which will now be invested directly into my brokerage account because I maxed out my Roth IRA and I don't really have any other ways of 
putting money into a tax advantage account beyond what I'm already doing. I am really excited for April though, because if I manage to pass this interview, my budget for April and onwards is going to look very, very different. Well, maybe not different from the expenses side, but definitely from the investing side. And I'm really hoping that y'all will stick around to watch that happen. In any case, that's all for this Transfer Tuesday. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video.